still around if I move out. Why him, Lisa? Leaving me for Albert, of all people. Tenderness. And I never showed you tenderness? No. Well, you did, but any man can do that. Whisper the right things at the right time, but it's just a routine. It's just a means to an end, isn't it, Zach? And he didn't have a routine, I suppose. Don't be nasty. This isn't easy for me either, you know. Sorry. We were working together last week at the Cairns. And for once he was grafting as hard as I was. But I was knackered. And I just wanted to come home to you. But then I heard Becky Cairns laughing with her kids about you chasing her and how funny she thought it all was and it cut me to the quick. I've admitted how stupid I've been about all that. I haven't finished. This isn't about her. I was filling up with tears. But I carried on working like I always do, like nothing ever bothers Lisa. And then suddenly I felt something lightly touched my cheek and it was Albert and he was brushing a strand of hair away from my face with the back of his finger he was making a play well that's what I thought but when I looked up to say something he wasn't even looking at me he was just carrying on working I don't think he even knew he'd done it it was just the teeniest gesture that And it was then that I knew I didn't want to come home anymore. Morning after the night before. How many did you have last night? Ned? Not nearly enough. Oh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? What's gorgeous? Well, the day, the weather, the farm. When Sarah gets back, there won't be half as much for you to do. So make the most of how gorgeous it all is, while you can. I'll finish off at the other end. What's dripping his face up? I think he's still drunk. <laughs> hey, you. Give us a kiss or I'll put a love bite on your neck. Come on, come on. I haven't got Hold a lot. Hold on. Thank you. There you go. That's yours. Thank you. <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> Ah, ah, just, uh, <laughs> come off the night watch, have you? Oh, hello. I smell Philly busting. What have you got there? Nothing. Yes, what have you got there? It's a present. Oh, Eric, you shouldn't um, have. Uh, Dee, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's nothing, really. It's, um... What is it? It's a specialised herbal remedy. Oh, that's what they call it these days, is it? You've been buying things from the back of the papers. Oh, me and Seth have a good giddle over that every Sunday. What? <laughs> well, it'll take more than a leather jock strap to rekindle your dying ember. It is not a jock strap, thank you. There you are, see? Picked you up already. What's a jock strap? It's, uh. Go on then, Beaky, you tell her. It's a Scottish thing. It's not my fault if Lisa wants me. Do you love her? Who's a lover? Well, I think I love her. So what are you going to marry her for then? Well, it's just where it panned out. You see, I asked her if she fancied it. What? It. You mean the other? Exactly. See, you understand me. Maybe you should be marrying me then. She'd just been scrapping with Zach and she just sort of blurted it out. But you asked her to get wed. So here we are. Oh, I'm disgusted with you. You've broken Uncle Zach's heart because you couldn't sort out your it from your other. Let it to see his face, though. Me and Lisa would probably make a good team. OK. Now say that again. And this time, try and make it sound convincing. 
I noticed you and Alice were late for school this morning. Yeah, we had to come back to look for the pumps. It's ridiculous making them do gym on the first day back. <laughs> With a flat that small, you could find anything you want. <laughs> You've never had kids, have you, Eric? I've thrown that stupid stuff out. Gee, how could you? Because you're all right. And it's not good for you to think you have to take something to feel energetic. Well, I suppose you haven't noticed that I've been a bit under power recently. Probably, but you're still not taking that stuff. So, you want to lodge with me, do you? That's about the size of it, Betty. Just for a couple of weeks, nothing permanent. Trouble at home. I'd really rather not talk about it. Barney was Ike. I'd really rather not talk about it. He's not throwing you out, has he? I'd, I'd really, really rather... rather not. Yes, all right, all right. This is the deal, lady. Ten pound a night. Twelve. Eight. Done. <laughs> that includes your breakfast, and there's no floating round in your nighty. I don't wear a nighty. Well, absolutely no floating round at all, then. Thanks a lot, Betty. You've been very fair. I'll bring my stuff down later. <laughs> Ten, twelve, eight. Oh, you're losing your touch, Eggleton. Again, loads of women would give their right arms for a bloke like Steve. You've seen them watching him when he walks into a room. I mean, he's good looking, he's loaded. You sound like one of those cruddy dating agencies. You'll be telling me he's really nice next. <laughs> yes, and what is wrong with being really nice? Well, nothing in a nanny. But in a man, it's repellent. You don't think that throwing himself under my car was the most manipulative gesture in the world? Haven't you ever made a fool of yourself for love? Talking about me again, ladies? <laughs> don't flatter yourself. Actually, we were discussing horse flesh. Mm, speaking of horses, isn't Alex due home soon? <laughs> now, let me see if I can guess which part of Alex reminds you of a horse. <laughs> I'm going to come down here and give you a right mouthful. But? I can't be bothered, Lisa. I'm knackered. I've been up all night pacing the floor with me dad. I know, I could hear you. I was pacing in the living room myself. You want to get that ceiling fixed, mind? How can we? I've got no money. And you're a ceiling fixer. But my dad's lost everything. Our Ben died. My mum left him. I was 17 and they've both gone and all. But now the ceiling fixer. I didn't mean that to be nasty, you know. It was a kind of compliment. I know. Maybe your dad should learn to take more care of the things he loves. I think I'm beginning to get angry with you now, Lisa. I better go then. Yeah, but hang on a minute. Why are you going to wed me, Uncle Albert? Eh? When you, you, you've had a face like. Like an unhappy person ever since last night. Why? Because sometimes you get on things and it's easier to stay on than to get off. I'm still waiting to get on. Hiya. Hello. Here's one for you and one for you. Ah. Oh, wouldn't word of mouth have done? No, it's my dad's big day and wanted to do it properly. And anyway, have you two come up with an act yet? Because all I've got is Roy and his disco. Well, we could always get Lisa Clegg to sing Who's Sorry Now. <laughs> or there's always Seth on the piano. Yes, but what would he be doing on the piano? <laughs> Zoe, why don't you come to the wine bar tonight and we can have a little nutter about it. I'll have a drink and you can have a nutter. Of course, wool packers would always be available for the gig. With you or Vic leading the band? <laughs> oh, Jack! Oh, Rachel, um, I haven't got you an invitation. Here's yours, Jack. What's this? It's for my dad's birthday. I mean, you are invited, Rachel. I've just forgotten to make you one. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Look, give us that back and I'll pop you on Jack and Sarah. Honestly, it doesn't matter. Do you want a pint? Oh, do you think I've upset her? You don't have to go to Betty's, Lisa. I'm not forcing you out. I never said you were. 
Stay at Albert's if you like. It's the best way. I just want you to know, Uncle Zach, right, right? This is me taking sides here. I'm just helping because she's determined to go. And be less upsetting if we do it quick, eh? Come on, Butch, give us a hand. Look, I know it's probably not the uh, right time, but your invitations will be in post. What are you like insensitive to teammates up for in tenderness, eh? She wouldn't even want you if she didn't have hair on her head. I'll keep him talking. You're in for ambulance. What hurts more, Sack? The fact that you've lost me, or that you've lost me to Albert? If you marry him, you'll get everything you deserve. And you'll deserve everything you get. Just as I thought. You're pathetic, Zack Dingle. Just about sums her up. Leah, Dad. I, I don't get it. What's a liar? Liar, son. Liar. Liar. Oh, right. That's dead good, that is, Dad. <laughs> liar. <laughs> no, it isn't. Lisa's right. I am pathetic. No, you are not. We can do it better than that, anyway. There's loads of them bedding plants left. We could have another one of them and put liar, liar, and underneath it put your pants on fire. No one would see it except us. What about people in planes, Dad, eh? Dead, depressed people coming back from the holidays. They'd look out the window, have a look at that, and they'd have a right good laugh, wouldn't they? I'm not sure I want people laughing at my plight. OK. You're probably right. Why don't we just have... Welcome to Yorkshire or something like that, eh? Anything you want. You call the shots down here, Dad. You wouldn't give your old dad a great big manly hug, would you? All right, then, yeah. Just try not to slap me back too hard, eh? Nah. Hey! I'd be lost without you, son, I would. <laughs> <laughs> So you don't think an overspend's a problem? Well, it depends what it is. We're hardly going to go under on the pittance we're paying Kelly Windsor. We? Yes, we. The shareholders. And if having Miss Windsor means Chris spends more time ogling her than he does bitching at us, she's money well spent. You're all heart. Thank you. Mrs T, Lord Oak will rang early when you're out. He wants you to ring him back. Uh, thanks, Jen. I'm far too busy to look at honeymoon pickies. Just passing on a message. Thank you. Look, why don't I come back tonight? We could go through the figures again. You're definitely over-ordering. Uh, thanks, Steve, but I've decided to spend the evening with James. I feel as though I haven't seen him properly for days. No problem. It's just good to be back. <laughs> good to have you back. No. Cathy? Yes, Dee, I'll be downstairs in one minute. I was going to suggest that I cover for you. Why? It's after three. You'll have to pick Alice up from school soon. I'm glad someone knows what's going on. I was only trying to help. We might have had our differences about the business, but, well, I'd hate you to think it was anything other than that. I'd always like to be supportive to you and Alice. We've been so happy here. Now, all of a sudden, either we've grown or the flat's got smaller. Must be a relief to be at Rachel's for a while. It is, but it's only temporary, and all this toing and froing of stuff starting to get on my nerves. I need to find somewhere more permanent. Right, I better find those wellies I was looking for. Well, have you tried looking in here? Haven't brought a nail, have we? Ned, what is your problem? You've been on my back all day. Since when have I ever shirked around here? Maybe it'd be best if you blooming well didn't come in if you've had a few too many the night before. Yeah, you're right. 
I've been in a pig of a mood all day. Sorry, OK? OK. I just don't like a bad atmosphere. No, I'm sure you don't. Neither do I. So what are you doing now, then? Picking Joseph up or what? Betty's looking after him, so I'm going straight to the wine bar. Oh, I'll give you a lift. Shift will be starting soon. No, it's OK. I'll, I'll make my way there. You two made friends now, then? Well, I've done the right thing, if that's what you're saying. And to say I'm sorry, I'm giving Rachel a lift to work. Um, no, that's all right, Ned. I'll drop Rachel off. There's a couple of things to do here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll stay. Only I thought you said we'd done. Well, we are. Well, what's the problem, then? <sighs> yeah, you're right. Take a lift with Ned, Rachel. Yeah, OK. Go on, then. Thanks, Ned. No problem, boss. At least I can do after today. And I hope none of them come in the wine bar because I'm sick of the three of them. I know. I mean, them three's enough to make you want to stay single, aren't they? No. No. <laughs> don't, don't even ask him. Dad, what are you doing? I told you not to ask him. I'm constructing a structure to keep him away from me. We're having a separate estate. And if these Germans can build one overnight, then so can I. Who's the East Germans? People who live in East Germany. And where's that, then? East of West Germany. But it don't exist anymore. Right. So he's just winding me up, then? So it's questions with you, isn't it? What is? I would have been late for work if you hadn't given me a lift. Thanks a lot. I owe you one. No problem. Just one thing, Rachel. What? Give us a kiss or I'll put a love bite on your neck. <laughs> you see, that's the thing about hangovers. The hurt like elbow that make everything sharper. You've lost it, Ned. Funnily enough, that's just what I thought last night when I drove up to the farm. I thought, wine bottle, a couple of glasses. I don't know. Sarah's come home early. And then I saw your clothes and Jack's clothes in a little trail up the stairs. Just remind me about someone, will you, Rachel? What relation are you to Jack? That is a disgusting thing to say. You know I'm not related to Jack. Joe Sugden was my stepfather. So you are having an affair, then? No, that's not what I said. Oh, dear. I thought you'd been better prepared than this, Rachel. I was wondering how long it would be before you showed your face. Not even a friendly kiss. I don't go in for friendly kisses. So is that your way of saying how much you miss me? The only thing I missed about you was the hours you put in at the stud farm. A flirt. That's me. So why are you here? Strapped for cash after your honeymoon? I came because I couldn't stop thinking about you. Tara that good, is she? Tara and I have always known we'd marry each other. You could say it's been a sort of an arrangement between our families. Do you understand? No. But I know a pile of dung when I smell it. What I'm trying to say is that I've just spent 20 grand taking a woman I dearly love on honeymoon when the woman I want is here. I thought you a lot didn't discuss money. Would you answer something for me, Alex? If I can. What would you do if I told you you were really nice? Throw you on that sofa and rip your clothes off. Just checking. Look, I know you haven't had things easy lately, losing your mum and that. So you think that I've gone looking for a dad instead? No, I don't think that at all. I can see why you fell for Jack and vice versa. I mean, him and Sarah's been having a rough patch for the past few months. And I suppose some blokes seek comfort elsewhere. Comfort? Ned, one minute you're making me out to be a tart, the next I'm a pair of old slippers. I think you want what you can't have. I mean, you took Chris off Cathy. You ask her how pleased she was to see the back of him. Yeah, I, I might have fallen in love with her husband, but at the end of the day, I did her a favour. Boss! So you just go out and nick somebody else's husband. That's great. I am not taking anyone where they don't want to go. You're making it sound as if I've put a ring through Jack's nose and I'm leading him astray, as if he's so weak that he can't decide for himself whether he wants to be with me or not. Some best friend you are. You're just twisting things now. Ned, it's because you're making everything so simple. It's as if there's just good girls and bad girls. Well, if I'm a bad girl, that's just fine. At least I know I'm still alive. I'm warning you, Rachel. Ned, you might be happy in a stale marriage, but I don't think that Jack is. But don't take my word for it. Ask him yourself. I'm sorry I'm late. Can I make a quick phone call? Public phone's broken. 
Uh, well, can I pop out and use the box? Yes, of course I can. But you won't be popping back. Now get changed and get on with your work, please. Go on. Still feeling run down, are you? No thanks to you. I've tried every product there is in the chemist just to give me a boost, and all I've ended up with is constipation. Well, that's what I've come to talk to you about. Uh, not constipation. I'm giving up on you. No, no, have faith. It's coming. And so is Christmas. It's just going to cost slightly more than I thought. How much more? Another, another 20, but it's good stuff. All them bodybuilders use it on the sly, like strength and stamina, eh? That's what it gives you. Ain't you even going to argue the toss? No. Cos I'm too tired, you fool. That's why I need to pick me up. Oh, Rachel, um, you will come to my dad's party, won't you? Uh, well, I'll try, but the problem is that most of my regular babysitters will, will be there. <laughs> no, 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 Linda. Oh, go on. Please. Just a little song. You know, I bet you'd do a great Sally Bowles. You know who you should do? Who? Marcel Marceau. <laughs> right now. A spoil sport. I might do something. Oh. Kim's not going to be there, so I'm going to take the night off and get all dressed up. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Sophie, did Alex drop in with those papers today? No. But Kim said something about catching up with him when she could be bothered. Thanks. I want us to continue our relationship. So do I. Oh. Good. There was never any question we wouldn't. We do have a rather expensive stud farm to run. And what about our personal relationship? <sighs> You've already made your decision on that. You married Tara. Come on, Kim. You're not stupid. You're asking me to be your mistress. If you like. Bit of a flawed proposition, though. How come? The definition of a mistress is a kept woman. And seeing as I'm the one with all the money and you're an aristocrat on his uppers, it looks like you can't afford me. The last five generations of Oakwells have taken a mistress. This is my heritage we're talking about. Yes, but do you know anything about the heritage of the workers? I don't really care. But tell me anyway. Plain speaking? <laughs> Sorry, mate. You blew it. See yourself out. It's the Char's night off. <laughs>